here with us for the next hour, Senator uh, Heidi Heitkamp. She is a member uh, of a number of key committees, including banking, homeland, security, and small business uh, for her. Oh, we put North Dakota, is that? <laughs> <laughs> She's at the center of the nation's energy boom. Uh, and, you know, I have seen here, Senator, I've seen that, um, that, that Governor Cuomo created 500,000 jobs in, in the, and, and I didn't realize he actually went out there and created each of those jobs himself. It's amazing for his reelection. But you, I would say, did create, you did get us 3% unemployment in North, North Dakota. Well, the, the reality is, and you know it, and that's the story here, a lot of politicians on both sides say they created jobs. Exactly. Jobs get created in the private sector after we create conditions that allow those jobs to get created. And in North Dakota, we got tons of jobs. What's, what's the unemployment right now? It, I, I say it's zero because we have 25,000 jobs unfilled. We need 25,000 workers in North Dakota today to fill those jobs. Is there anyone that would benefit from a minimum wage hike in North Dakota? Uh, not a lot of people would benefit from a minimum wage That's a wage better hike. way of doing it. Well, you know, the, the, the bottom line is that we need to figure out what we're going to do with income disparity and, and what we're going to do. Creating so high-paying jobs uh, is a good well, way to, I, that's to do That's right. It. And, and um, we're fortunate in North Dakota that we have uh, oil in the ground and that we have the technology to get that oil out. And we have great industrious people that make a difference. And so we're, we're booming. But the, the, the story of North Dakota isn't just out west with energy. We've got high-tech startups in Fargo. We've got UAS Say blossoming. that again. Say Fargo for me. Fargo. Fargo. <laughs> Love it. Oh, it, you know, here we go again. Wait, oh, that's good, too. You <laughs> betcha. Here we go again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh God. God. You knew we were going to do that. Have you been? I, I somehow you know where you Brainerd is. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of your listeners would like to hear about our high-tech startups and our UAS. And, we're, we, we're, um, we're one of the test sites for um, testing the airspace for UAS, for unmanned uh, aircraft. That's going to be a huge boom because that's a platform with which we're going to develop high-tech surveillance equipment. And if we don't over-regulate in that area, we're going to be in great shape in North Dakota, not only in the West, but in the, in the East. We don't over-regulate. That's what I mean. Is there, there's a name for people in the house like you. They're called blue dogs a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And you're wearing a nice red jacket <laughs> and everything. And, uh, and it I, is, you, you are senator in a very nice red state most of the yes, time. Right? Well, I'm just telling you that I wear red because it proves that redheads can wear red. That's yeah. the only real reason I have two gingers. I, I love gingers. I'm very uh, partial, partial uh, to ginger. But just listening to you, you, you do, you must be uh, one of the people that are craving some bipartisanship because a lot of the things you say do not sound like the core of the Democratic Party. You know, I came with the idea that we represent the people of our state and the country and not a political party. And we've been pretty... Uh, Pretty vocal about that um, the whole while I've been there. And I think probably if you look at the, the shutdown of government when it opened up, who opened up government? It was a bipartisan group led by Susan Collins. I was part of that group. I think we're continuing to try and build on that because no matter what happens in the November elections, we need to have a Senate that works. And a Senate that works is one that can build consensus around You're not up votes. in November. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good thing. Did you vote yes on Obamacare? Uh, I, well, I wasn't in So you weren't Senate. there. Would you have voted yes? You know, I think that um, I've come out with a series of fixes that I think could be very helpful in the health. But the original, if, if you had been sitting there, you would have voted yes? It's hard to know. I, I mean, I would like to think if I were sitting there, we might have had a different product. Would you? Really? Yeah. I, th I think we should have looked at things a little differently. I think the 30 you lost. Hour... You couldn't go back to the Senate because you lost... Uh, you lost uh, Ted Kennedy's seat, so the Senate couldn't have fixed it. They, you had to do reconciliation. Well, you have House. to you have to do consensus, and and that's the one lesson I think from the health care law is that broad-based legislation, change huge change legislation, needs to come from a broader base, and exactly. that's what we did with housing finance reform. That's what we did with First, even, we, even we OBJ. Even OBJ when that was done, it was yeah. done on a more what, it, Keystone. You you would do that. Obviously. Tomorrow, I'd do it tomorrow. We've got pipe that's stockpiled in North Dakota. Can you imagine the investment all along that, that route that uh, they have languishing, waiting for approval? People, what, what do you think will actually happen with that? I think what's going to happen is Nebraska is going to approve it, and the last excuse goes, and there's no legal reason to deny uh, the approval of the Keystone Pipeline. Okay. Now, is it the salvation, as some people would argue, for the American economy? No, but it is a, a critical piece of energy infrastructure that we absolutely need in order to get energy products to but the But the market. left says 300, the far left says 300 jobs. Um, it, well, people say it's 20,000 jobs when you... When 
when it, or even more when you look at all the the benefits from the entire route of whatever well, kind the, of jobs. The, the, this is what I say. It's obviously more than 300 jobs. Well, is it? Is yeah. it? Is well, it well, but, than... but, but these aren't these aren't permanent jobs. But they are just just as the president would say, building infrastructure, a road. None construction. of those are permanent either. Right. And so what we're talking about is something that could be very much a stimulus in a number of states. Now we don't need those jobs, but we need the pipeline because we need to move our product to market. And the real danger behind not approving Keystone is that we have an energy transportation infrastructure, you know, gridlock that we need to break. And when, when they see that we can attack fossil fuel development right. by attacking the pipeline, then so we it, have a problem in the So is it more symbolic or... No. When, you, when you think of Keystone, is, is it, I mean, to me, to some degree, it's become a symbol yeah. more, than, more yeah. than anything else. I mean, there are real jobs at stake. But there's something else going on here. Well, that's right. And what's going on here is if we can't attack the development of the resource at its source, which is the oil sands up in Alberta, what we're going to do is we're going to try and prevent the development of that resource right. by attacking the transportation. But it's and that's move. very dangerous. It's going to move on train lines well, otherwise, which is it, a little more dangerous way of bringing it down. Well, I, I'm not going to concede that it's more or less dangerous. But what I will tell you is that we need more pipeline capacity in this country. We have a backlog on the rails that is desperate desperately hurting my ag producers because tra you can't get track time. Right. So we've got to figure this out because not just in oil and gas, we've got to figure it out in electrical generation transmission. I mean, we've got gridlock issues all over and, and a need to build out that transportation infrastructure. And you know who knows that? Secretary Moniz. His whole uh, quadrennial energy review is based on moving the energy, not whether we have enough energy to develop. Well, the symbol, Andrew, is, is that it's hydrocarbons, and, and it's building out more hydrocarbon infrastructure, which six years ago was something that before this revolution, this fracking revolution came along, the Obama administration had no interest in building out hydrocarbon infrastructure and they've been dragged kicking and screaming into where maybe they need to do it at this point but they still haven't and that's why because he has to appease certain people on the left that will go crazy if you build out hydrocarbon infrastructure because of climate change well i, I mean I, I can only tell you from my perspective we need to build out infrastructure we need more than just um, Keystone, hydrocarbon, know. hydrocarbon right, infrastructure. Right. I mean, we are not moving off hydrocarbons in the near future. We've right. got to get it to market. And I hope one thing that John Hess and I are going to talk about when he comes on is the need to change policies regarding exports okay. of so hydrocarbons. You, you would be, like I said, the, the lights are on at the, at the GOP headquarters <laughs> for you when you want to come home. But tell me, because you, you, regulations, you don't necessarily like high taxes, you like uh, Keystone, you wouldn't necessarily have gone with Obamacare. What is it that makes you, what, what, what about the Democratic Party keeps you in it at this point in North well, Dakota? It, I mean, what I used to tell people when they asked me, I would say, I looked at the Ryan budget and didn't see a lot there for, for people. I didn't see a lot of investment in, uh, in uh, technology. I didn't see a lot of opportunity to build out for uh, the future, whether it's investing in children, whether it's investing in higher education. And so I think there's a lot to be said about where you're going to find a party that wants to build out resources for the honor and dignity of the middle class. And that's really what, what I'm so about. So when you say investing, you're talking about government spending on those things. I'm talking what you about mean. education that's the inv investing. Right. Who, head start. Head start for parents who can't afford to send their kids to fancy okay. preschools. Do you think that, that the, the entitlement issue that, that Ryan was trying to address, is that something we need to do eventually well, with, I, I think you know, like his voucher system or something? That, or? Well, that's right. But, but I think when you look at what's going what's to absolutely knock us for a loop in terms of budget deficits, it's health care. You know, we don't have a deficit problem as much as we have a growing cost of health care. And we've got to figure that out as we age out, as we look at new technologies. So what would you do? Maybe you would look at, well, how, how could we delay the onset of Alzheimer's to save costs? How could we delay Parkinson's to save costs? How could we get people to live healthier? Those are the things that we talk about in the Democratic Party that I don't hear a lot of discussion about in the Republican Party. And so I think some of the ideas for the future, for me, when I look at moving forward to the future, I, I think those are the values that, uh, where I belong. But there's things that I think where, where we see gaps in logic behind how business actually works and what we need to do to provide certainty. And I think that's a fault on both the far right and the far left. We need to get that moderate middle 
talking more and more about certainty in business so that we can get this country moving again and investing again. All right, well, you can't stay here. You probably like to stay. You got to go back to Washington eventually and go back into that vortex. Uh, <laughs> it's nice here, isn't it? It's uh, we talk about things and, I know. and it's we nice don't to, yell. No. <laughs> well, we'll see. But uh, <laughs> it's nice to, to have you here on set. But because we've been in the rotunda with you I down know. there, uh, but what we came down to see you this time. I know. You came, yeah, Thank it's good. You. All right. And cool. it's Fargo. 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 We're gonna have Fargo. more from the Fargo. senator. Still <laughs> ahead. You betcha yeah. we will.